Oh, hey. Do you know how revolutionary serverless cloud was? The idea that you can build and deploy a full application without ever thinking about physical servers that everyone and their mothers started to offer cloud capabilities in a serverless fashion. Most of them were pretty successful in abstracting away all the complexity of provisioning any sort of physical infrastructure. But there was a new problem that came up with this. Serverless was no longer about the lack of physical servers. It became about vendor-specific APIs and services and lock-in. You suddenly have to decide what database service you're using, where you're going to host your application, whether that's containers or functions, how you're going to do real-time PubSub. Do you need cron job scheduling? Do you need message queues? Do you need orchestration events? How are you going to do all of this? And then you have to figure out how to integrate your application into each of these services. You have to figure out their vendor-specific APIs and then be logged into them for the rest of eternity. You have to think about cloud as this collection of fragmented services that you have to figure out how to put together on your own for your applications. So what are some solutions to this? Before I go into the solutions, I first want to emphasize that the change that we need here is a long-term paradigm shift in how we think about the cloud. Instead of thinking about cloud in terms of capabilities and APIs, we have to think about cloud as one runtime that has all the capabilities that we need. Think about it. When we write code to run on a machine or on a computer, on a physical server, we don't care about the specific pieces of hardware that the machine is running. We don't care about talking to the memory stick or the disk or the processor or the graphics unit. We just write code in terms of higher level primitives and it works. So instead of thinking about cloud in terms of these fragmented services, we have to think of cloud as one unified ecosystem that we can leverage higher level primitives to build our apps with. But we have a few years before we really get to that approach. So let's look into some things that we can do today. One of the biggest explosions in the recent years in cloud has undoubtedly been infrastructure as code. The idea that you can define all the cloud infrastructure you need in your favorite programming language right in your source code is very attractive. You get all the goodies like syntax highlighting, and autocomplete and version control and IDE tooling and testing and everything. But infrastructure as code comes in different flavors and not all of them are trying to solve the same problem. Tools like AWS CDK or Azure Bicep or Google Cloud Deployment Manager are offerings by these specific cloud platforms to leverage infrastructure on that platform. You can use these and get access to all the capabilities available to that platform, but you're still logged into that one platform if you decide to use one of these tools. On the other hand, tools like Terraform and Pulumi can be used to leverage infrastructure on pretty much any cloud service. In a similar vein, we have tools like the serverless framework or the architect framework that also don't lock you into one specific cloud platform. And they also take away a lot of the complexity of configuring physical infrastructure and give you higher level primitives like APIs and events and apps or pages, whatever, that you can use to model your application while still giving us an escape hatch to configure those small fine grained details that if you want to do that, you can do that. So the second flavor of infrastructure as code is a pretty good candidate for the future of serverless. On the other side of the spectrum, we have this thing called cloud native. The idea of cloud native is to completely ignore all the higher level abstractions that cloud platforms provide us and just drop down to the very basic piece of infrastructure, the virtual machine or the container, whatever. On top of these, you can run your own infrastructure with things like Kubernetes and Knative and essentially build your own private cloud experience to offer your teams. Now, this is technically not serverless because you're configuring individual virtual machines and you're using them to build your own platform, but every other team is able to enjoy a serverless experience that is curated towards them by your platform team. You can use open source tools to build this platform. You can write your own, or you can get commercial licenses, whatever you wanna do here. But it's called cloud native because every cloud platform offers virtual machines, and you can take this infrastructure and put it on any cloud that you want, and you can also put it in your own data centers if you have those. I can see very large teams that have a lot of scaling requirement going for this option because at some point, paying full-time engineers to develop an internal platform is going to be cheaper than uh, provisioning serverless platforms from these cloud providers. However, to hit that point, you have to have a lot of scaling requirement. 
I did some basic calculation and put it on this Twitter thread. Essentially, a rule of thumb is that if you need like 60 to 70 BP servers running 24 seven all the time, if that's the kind of workload requirement that you have, cloud native might be a cheap option for you but you will still run into issues of having to provision a lot of open source or commercial software and building your own platform out of it, which is not an easy task. Okay, so let's step back a little. We got infrastructure as code and we got cloud native. Both of these kind of seem a little complicated. Can we do better? We absolutely can. Say hello to the self-provisioning runtime. The term self-provisioning runtime made its debut on the website of one Sean Swix Wang. It describes a platform that can automatically infer all the infrastructure dependencies of your application from your source code, and it can automatically provision them when you want to deploy your application. You don't have to think about cloud services at all. This blog post is relatively recent. It's a little over a year old, but these kind of platforms have existed for a while now, and we use them quite a bit. One of the examples is everyone's favorite serverless platforms, Vercel. When deploying your app to Vercel, you don't have to leverage any sort of uh, build containers or Lambda functions or Edge functions, anything at all. You just put some files in a specific folder and they're automatically deployed to Lambda functions with appropriate HTTP routing to them without you ever thinking about it. I think this is a pretty stable implementation of the self-provisioning runtime but it also solves one specific problem, not all of them. On the other side, Temporal is a service that allows you to write a lot of complex stateful logic and Temporal can automatically provision things like scheduled tasks or functions to run your code or state machines or data stores or message queues and any kind of infrastructure that you might need for that code. It has even been called uh, React for backends by this random person on the internet. This is another example of how self-provisioning runtimes are very powerful by taking all the infrastructure thinking away from you so that you can focus purely on the code that you wanna write. And then there's things like the serverless cloud. Yes, there is a cloud platform called the serverless cloud, which is made by a company called serverless.com who also own the, a framework called serverless framework. They are really trying to be the de facto way to do serverless on the internet. And it's kind of working. Serverless cloud, which has now spun off into an independent product called AMP, calls itself the infrastructure from code platform. In a similar fashion to Vercel and Temporal, AMP will allow you to write all your code full stack and not think about any sort of databases or hosting or PubSub or HTTP, any, nothing at all. And you can just deploy it to the service and it all works. There are other projects trying to achieve a similar goal like Wasplank or Cloud Compiler, Encore, and Nitric. Th there are a few more that I might be missing here because this is a very exciting and very young space and a lot of people are doing some really great work here. However, these platforms face the same issue of generalization versus specialization that everyone has faced before them. Services like Vercel and Temporal do a great job of solving the one problem that they solve while also being able to scale to extreme complexity and extreme requirements. These all-encompassing solution might fall short at that. Now, I might be wrong here. If these platforms end up working out, that's awesome. That's a win for everyone. Okay, so we talked about these three patterns. Infrastructure as code, cloud native, and self-provisioning runtimes. In my opinion, each of them have the potential to be the future of unified serverless development but today they all have their own trade-offs. Self-provisioning runtime is kind of a young space. You can use tools like Temporal and Vercel, but you still have to use multiple of them to serve all the use cases of your application. Other projects that do everything are kind of young and not really something you would want to bet on right away. For extremely large enterprise scale projects, you might go with infrastructure as code if you wanna make use of cloud platforms, or you might want to go with cloud native if you want to cut costs and build your own platform. For anything in between, it's a toss up between infrastructure as code or anything else, depending on how much of your infrastructure you want to control through code or how much do you want to rely on services like Temporal or Vercel to do for you. Maybe one of these competing spaces comes out with something new that makes everything else obsolete. That'll be great. Or maybe we see a new fourth category emerge that'll make all the other three obsolete. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Hmm. 
Strawberry is good. Very good. Eat strawberries.